What happened with your roommates at your first LA house? What happened with you and Sky? What happened between you and Rory? Why were you so desperate to move out? What happened with you and Bryce? Why didn't you and Sarah vibe as well on your podcast? Was part of your breakup with Rory over his friendship with Bryce and them? Who the fuck is David? I can't believe I'm sitting down to do this video right now, but it is so necessary for me to do this right now before I continue uploading anything else. I have a ton of videos banked right now that I feel really good about and I'm really excited to upload and everything, but I just feel like after my last video that I uploaded, obviously of the apartment tour and just showing you guys my moving process and how emotional it was for me and everything, I feel like, actually no, it's not even I feel, I know that I have so much that I have to just catch you guys up on things that this whole entire year, I felt like I basically had a gun to my head to not speak on ever to try and protect other people's feelings or spare them hate online which obviously I would never promote but this entire year I was trying to care for other people and prevent situations and in doing that I've only hurt myself and I know every few months it's good to do a video like this because behind the scenes stuff happened and it's natural to just like feel a disconnect from your audience every now and then but I feel like this entire year for me has felt like a disconnect because it wasn't only a disconnect from you guys it's been a disconnect for myself and I'm only just getting back to figuring out who I am and remembering who I am and going back to the girl that basically lost herself the second I stepped foot into my LA house last year while being in a relationship. The first seven months of this year was just complete fucking trauma for me and I feel like only now have things calmed down and I just feel so good again and I obviously want to share that with you guys but to be able to do that I have to address what the fuck happened. I posted like a question and answer thing on Instagram and everyone's questions basically summarized well some people even went straight to the point they were like what the fuck happened this year and I don't even think I really realized what happened this year until I moved to this apartment and I had to sit down and accept so much shit happened this year it's genuinely unbelievable and now that I'm on the other side of things and I'm so much happier with all this shit in the past I feel like I can just talk about it now and you know I don't give a fuck I don't give a fuck anymore I guess this is just like a big reset from here and I'm just going to catch you guys up on some shit and just be as honest as I feel comfortable being before we start this video just if you could please refrain from messaging any one that I mentioned in this video that would be fabulous because it's taking me a lot to do this video and I know it's going to come with this video but I currently feel six feet under when it comes to filming and uploading and editing right now because I just feel like I've been lying this whole year so I have to say things about my personal life my personal YouTube channel and I'm not saying anything that I'm about to say to try and start drama with people or try to throw people under the bus I'm doing it because I've cared about everyone but myself this whole entire year and this is me doing self-care here we go let's just start off with this I guess what happened with your roommates at your first LA house that house went to fucking shit the second we moved in. I feel like I blacked out that entire year, but it was not what I was expecting it to be at all. The group of people I moved into that house with physically is the people that I moved out of the house with, but relationship wise, all of those relationships got so fucked up. I don't know what the point is in beating around the bush, but I lived with six to seven people at times and everyone changed. Everyone fucking changed. I don't recognize a single person that I moved into that house with. I was put into a lot of friend groups and friendships and social situations situations that I really never wanted to be in the past year and didn't feel comfortable being in. I didn't feel myself in and I was just kind of pushed and pulled around for the first year of living in LA and all the people that I had moved to LA with that had hopes and dreams living out here just all got wrapped up in LA and everything changed. I miss the Boston friend group that I moved to LA with is literally just not that really anymore. One on one, some of the relationships are still fine but everything is definitely fucked up. It has been the saddest thing in the world for me to try and navigate and accept and I feel like a lot of this year I spent mourning friendships that I knew I was going to have to lose and have to cut out of my life to make myself happy again because holy fuck the shit that I was getting caught up in in LA. I hated every second of it and I was miserable being a part of so many different things that I felt like I had to be a part of because everyone in my house always wanted to do things that I didn't want to do, I didn't care about, I always felt like a fucking outcast. Everyone in that house just wanted to party 24 seven and I didn't. I know that people think that I'm just like the party animal. Oh my God, the irony. But yeah, everyone just ended up having different intentions with moving to LA and my intentions and hopes and dreams and goals did not match up with anyone else's anymore and I couldn't stand to be around it anymore so I kind of had to isolate myself for the last half of living in that house. That alone affected me so much this year because as you guys know and have seen I have vlogged with like the same friend group on YouTube for so many years now and those people were my pride and joy and I would do everything and anything for them. I mean I found the house that we moved to LA and I got all of us out there pretty much on my own. No one really helped me find a house last year. The house was under my name. My mom 
mom's name, actually. She was the co-signer. And moving to LA wouldn't have been a thing for a lot of those people without me. And I really got kicked to the fucking curb when I just didn't want to party every single day of the week. Or I felt like I couldn't vlog with them anymore because I wasn't the biggest creator in the room anymore. And there was bigger people to hang out with other than me. I just felt really insulted and lonely a lot of the time in that house. And it was really fucking depressing. I don't want to cry already into this video, but numbers mean a lot more to people out here than you realize. I had to learn that the hard way. Oh God. Fuck. What happened with you and Sky? So as I said in the last video and as I've posted about online now, me and Sky live in the same apartment building now and the beginning of 2020, we just had a falling out. I mean, Sky and I have known each other since we were 13 and friends fight. It's kind of it. Friends fight, they need time away from each other. They need to both grow and work on themselves. And then if they're past the line again, they become friends again. And that's literally just what happened with me and Sky. James lived here over the summer and I didn't really get to vlog much of that when he lived here because beginning of the summer was just a fucking nightmare for me. And I once again could not pick up my camera. James one day, had to go over to Sky's apartment to pick something up. And I was like, you know what? I want to go with you. I haven't seen Sky in a year and a half. I would love to see her. I heard she was doing amazing. She just accomplished so many things that I had always hoped she would one day in terms of like working on herself. And I was like, holy shit, I would love to see this new version of Sky. So I went with James and I saw Sky again and just felt like the good old days. And you know, we just became friends again. Now we live in the same apartment building and I love it. Are you and Caitlyn mortal enemies? No, we are not mortal enemies. She was actually supposed to come to the Pitbull concert in Boston and come on the party bus with all of us. I haven't seen her in so long and I was really excited about that, but last minute she couldn't go. And I was really sad about that because we almost saw each other. How do you feel about this new stage of your life? Confident and cute or scared and nervous? Feeling confident and cute. I mean, being in that house, I am someone that just like needs my alone time. I really don't know why I ever thought it was a good idea for me personally to live in a house with six people. That was my first mistake. I don't know why I thought living in the same room with someone I was dating was a good idea at that age either. I just made a lot of stupid fucking decisions because I thought that it was a good idea at the time. And you know, you live and you learn, but no, I'm back to just being by myself. I mean, not really by myself. I live with Sydney now, but like this is my first alone time that I've had since I lived in Boston and I had my own room there. I moved a year ago this month, so I just feel great again. I get to sit with myself and figure myself out. Do you think you'll move back to Boston after this lease in LA is up in a year? Yes, love you. Love you too. I have no idea. I mean, obviously I spent a lot of this summer in Boston because I'll talk about this more in a second too, but after me and Rory officially broke up, I was just like, oh my God, I'm single for the first time in basically two years. When we were dating, I didn't really feel like I could go out and be my own person. I turned 21 in October of last year and then I moved four days after that. So I had never gotten to experience anything in Boston at all whatsoever. And I just love Boston in the summer. Socializing out there is just so much better than here. So I just kept going back this entire summer and going out and having fun. And I, holy shit, I've had the time of my fucking life, you guys. I've met so many new amazing people that I'm just so happy about. And it really has made a lot of decisions that I had to make this year that were hard for me at first make sense. And I finally feel confident in them. I know I did the right thing for me in pretty much every single situation. I felt like I had to at least live in LA for one more year because my first year experience here was so fucked up. I mean, everyone always says that the first year of living in LA is bad and I wanted to just give myself one more chance here. You know, another year can't hurt. I still have not had the LA experience that you guys saw me grow up dreaming of and I wanted to just give myself another shot out here before I gave up on it. I felt like I would be a pussy if I just backed out after one year and was like, nope, I'm over it. But I mean, there are days where I'm like, I should have just gone back to Boston. But then it's been the summer and then I know that once it becomes winter and cold and dark at 4 p.m., I'll remember why I moved out here because if I don't see the sunshine and fucking palm trees every day, I'm gonna lose my mind again. So I don't know. I definitely don't think LA is a forever thing, but I also don't know where I belong and where I wanna go after this. And if I wanna stay here yet, I just, I don't know. Once again, I'm literally just only getting back to myself after being in a relationship where I barely had any free time to even think about myself. Speaking of that, all the questions are obviously about Rory, what happened between you and Rory? Why did we break up? Are you guys still friends? Was your last relationship toxic? Why were you so desperate to move out? I mean, it's all the same thing. All I really know how to say is, wow, things did not go how I planned them to at all. Moving to LA 100% affected us. Rory was obviously one of my best friends for like the longest time. I mean, that's why I started dating him because we just got along great and I really trusted him and I really loved him. And what really happened is just not meant for the internet. But at the same time, I do have to express how much this affected me as a person, this entire relationship and breakup. There's a reason I stopped vlogging with him and basically with my entire Boston friend group the second we moved in together. Like I said in the beginning of the video, people changed when they moved to LA right in front of my eyes. And that's basically what happened. I was no longer a priority in my own relationship. I had things that started to come before me and were deemed more important than me. And it took me a long time to wrap my head around everything. And during that time was when the podcast was being filmed and holy fuck, everything about me on that podcast just physically pains me because that girl 
was not okay. I just want to go back in time and tell that girl that it's going to be okay, but that girl was going through constant trauma, having the worst self-esteem in the entire world, going through a very long process of a relationship dwindling. I don't know, guys. We broke up for the first time in like April, and then we were kind of together again for a little bit, and then it was officially done right after Bryce's fight in Miami. And then from the middle of June till September, it was kind of just me living in that room, which obviously affected me so bad. I mean, you can just see it on my face right now. I still can't believe really anything that happened. Rory knows how much I loved and cared about him. I went above and beyond for him every fucking day of my life to the point where I was choosing him over myself, choosing things that he wanted to do over myself until it got to the point where I was like, I can't do this anymore. I'm willing to lose so many people and everything I moved to LA with to get out of this situation. And I did that. And it was so hard. It was so fucking hard. And to answer the question, did your roommates make the breakup easier or harder on you both? Harder for me. Because if a lot of them had chosen to take my side on things, they wouldn't be invited to LA parties anymore. I just have to say it how it is, right? Fuck. What happened to Nick? Nick got a girlfriend. What happened to Will? Will moved back home beginning of July. Me and Will are still friends. I still talk to him and I'm planning on hopefully seeing him during Thanksgiving. How did you mentally bounce back? I just started doing things for me again. Things that made me happy, which was traveling and going to concerts because those came back overnight this summer. I mean, I really felt connected to myself. Just going out and having fun and dressing up and just being with my friends and just seeing live music. What's your Outback order? What a fun, lighthearted question. I get a six ounce sirloin medium with a baked potato with butter and broccoli. It's so fucking good. I think I have to get out back later now. Why were you so desperate to move out? I just wanted myself back. I missed myself so much and I knew that I would get her back the second I got out of that house and I feel like I have already gotten her back. So what do you think you've improved on as a person? Sticking up for myself and realizing what I deserve. What happened with you and Bryce? Basically when Addison and Omer admitted that they were dating, there was a post where people were being really mean to Omer and I personally love Omer and I commented on the picture saying, I love Omer. And then Bryce unfollowed me. <laughs> like that, that's literally it. Which I didn't really see coming because I thought that I had been doing a great job balancing my relationship with Addison and Bryce because obviously I was friends with Bryce before but then I met Addison through him and even after they broke up I still went to Bryce's fight in Miami in June and me and Rory weren't even dating then and I still went to that and was civil with Rory there and that could have pissed Addison off but it didn't. She knew that I had been friends with Bryce for years so I was trying to support the both of them and I thought I had been doing a good job at all that and then I guess I wasn't. That's what happened. Has turning 21 and 22 during a pandemic affected you a lot? More than I even realize. I mean, most days I'll literally wake up and be like, fuck, just fuck. A lot of issues in like my everyday life lead back to that, especially when I feel like I'm having an identity crisis and I just think to myself, how did I get here? And everything just goes back to, oh, there was a pandemic. And I don't think I really understood how much it genuinely affected me until this summer when everything opened back up and I started going out to like clubs in Boston and bars in Boston. And I was like, if I don't socialize, I just literally feel like I'm dying. And when I got that back this summer, I was like, oh my God, no fucking wonder I've hated my life the past year. I haven't been able to do this to this extent. Has taking a break helped your mental health? Yes, 100%. It makes me really sad because I really just had to put YouTube on the back burner this entire year and I really wish I didn't have to do that. But now that I can make it a priority again because I miss you guys and I miss having the time to do shit that I love and not having to worry about a million other things or a million other people or have a million distractions because of the house I was living in, I just feel so much better and I just can't wait to get back into like the 2019 groove that I was in with just being inspired and feeling creative. Do you feel like going to LA unmotivated you from making videos? I think what caused my unmotivation is just a lot of toxic situations that I was obviously in when I got here. And then YouTube's just kind of been dead lately. And it's hard to have the same motivation that I once did in 2019 because TikTok has fully taken over. And this is like an issue that a lot of creators and I have been talking about lately. Actually, right before I started filming this video, I was just talking to Nikki Martino about this. YouTube's just so different than from how it once was. And it's just hard to have the 2019 motivation or the 2018 motivation when no one's really watching YouTube as much anymore and everyone's just on TikTok. Was part of your breakup with Rory over his friendship with Bryce and them? Yes. Are you really okay or are you just partying and drinking through the pain? I don't think that I was partying and drinking through the pain. I think I was partying and drinking through the celebration. I was so excited to be out of the fucking situations that I was in and my whole entire summer was just literally a celebration of life. Why didn't you and Sarah vibe as well on your podcast? Y'all's vlogs together used to slap. Because of how much stress we were both under because of the comments every week. Was it helpful to have Addison also going through a breakup at the same time? Yes, it was because we both just really had each other's backs through everything and I just don't think that I could have done it without her. So many of the questions are who the fuck is David? David even had the audacity to ask who is David. His friend that introduced us to each other in Boston even said who is David? Sydney said is David Sydney's boyfriend? Honestly, all great questions, guys. I don't even think I know who the fuck David is. Just kidding. I will formally introduce him in vlog format soon. Specifically my Halloween vlog because I am spending Halloween 
Halloween in New York this year. I am switching things up for myself. I'm not doing the Halloween in LA. And for me, that's a pretty big deal because y'all know how iconic those vlogs used to be with everyone. But I just feel like this year, it's just not in the cards for me. I don't want to do it. We're going to try something new and going to go to New York next week. What happened in Hawaii that gave you an epiphany? Once again, the details don't need to be online. But my second trip to Hawaii in April was when Rory and I broke up for the first time. There's actually this picture that me, Addison, and Meg took. And that day was actually when like something happened. And I remember that picture being taken and thinking to myself, when that gets developed, that's going to be that picture that I look at one day and just see my facial expression in that and think to myself, I am going through hell right now and no one has any idea. Have your thoughts on celebrity and influencer culture changed since moving to LA? Yes, actually. People are just people. Other than Bruno Mars, Harry Styles, Justin Timberlake, Taylor Swift, Ariana Grande, and Pitbull. Everyone else is just a person. The way that other people just really will do whatever some people with followers say out here is just fucking mind blowing. People would rather mindlessly follow people around than be in a friend group of people who maybe don't have followers. And it's just insane to me. Like I just value so many different things than people out here do. I don't know. Do you think that you imagined living in LA to be something different? I thought I was going to do a lot more things out here before I moved and I really haven't done much. And that makes me really sad. I want to get out more. I just haven't really figured out what I like to do out here yet for some reason. And I thought that I would take advantage of the things that LA could offer. I also want to pick up more hobbies outside of YouTube just for myself to have like a schedule and shit. And that's also why I'm staying here for another year. Like I just haven't figured out how to do LA my way yet. How many rock bottoms did you hit this year? Probably five. So did Rory just get another room or did you guys sleep together still? He moved to Bryce's. How is your hair doing after that appointment in the beginning of the year? My hair is destroyed from that appointment still. I'm going to be dealing with that for so long and I'm so mad about it. And I have to get it dyed so often now, but I haven't been doing permanent dye, but I'm about to just have to and then accept that I can never try another color with my hair ever again. How the hell did you even live in that house after you outgrew the situation? I have no fucking idea. Fight or flight mode, baby. Can we talk about burnout? I would love to see your side of it. Oh my God. Yeah. Talk about burnout. This whole year I felt so burnt out. I just feel like I don't know what to do half the time anymore. And I think part of that goes into just like rediscovering myself again, but like YouTube is so different right now. I literally don't know what the fuck to do. And I still love it so much. Like this is my pride and my joy and my baby. Like I love this and I love you guys to fucking death. And I know my editing takes up like 50% of the reason why people watch my videos. And that's why it just sucks that I get so frustrated when it comes to editing now because I'm, YouTube is so stagnant right now that I'm like, what is the point? No one is on YouTube right now. Everyone's on TikTok. Everything just feels like it's at a standstill right now. Are you happy with the choices you've made this year? Very happy now, for sure. How long did it take for you to be okay after your breakup? Probably three months of like the few times we broke up and kind of got back together and then broke up and then kind of got back together and then really broke up. That's probably a three month period of just grieving and accepting and getting over it. And then I really feel like one day at like the end of July, I just woke up and I was like, okay, I'm all set now, actually. <laughs> How's the single life? It's fucking dope. Boys, tell me everything. I'm not telling you shit. What will you listen to first? Silk Sonic, Michael Buble, or Taylor Swift's album when it drops next month? Oh my God, guys, I'm actually going to be at my family's house in Key West next month when all those albums drop and I think I'm going to have to do Silk Sonic first because I just have to. And also there's not going to be that many songs because Bruno always releases short albums, but then right after that, we are going to miss Taylor Swift and we are letting all of our emotions out. And then after that, we're going to be like, hold the fuck up. It's about to be Christmas. Let's do Michael Bublé's 10th anniversary Christmas deluxe album with all these extra new Christmas songs. And it's just going to be a wonderful celebration. Do you still think moving to LA when you did like in 2020 was the right move? I just don't really think there's a point in regretting it because what is that going to do for me? Just give me a negative thought process on something and that's not not beneficial to anyone. I also just don't know what I would have done if I had stayed in Boston. I needed to get out of my family's house. I had to. It was the right move for me at the time. Anything beyond that, that happened in the house that we moved into. No, I wish it didn't happen. On a scale of one to 10, how much did you actually like Margaritaville? I fucking love Margaritaville. I stayed there in Nashville for Harry Styles when I saw him last month. And yes, you're getting a vlog from that. Don't worry. But Margaritaville is fucking dope. What are the Halloween costumes going to be this year? All I'm going to say, you're probably not expecting me to do what I'm doing next week. Do you have any plans to move back to Hawaii? No, no, I don't, but I want to go one more time before the year ends to see Megan. Dealing with a breakup, going out with your friends or going out with guys again? Both, but definitely start with going out with your friends because then that will lead to going out with guys. But focus on your girlfriends first before you even ever consider another guy. And then from there, things will happen. That's my advice. How has it been in your new apartment with your roommate? It's been amazing. Sydney was there for me with like everything this entire year and she also used to live in that house for a little bit last year. There was like a vlog or two of her living with me last year, but she saw everything 
everything that went down in the house and she saw the dynamic of everything and she watched everyone change and she watched my relationship with Rory just go to shit. So having her here with me is just like the best thing in the entire world for me. And we just really have each other's backs and we're having a great time. And we just got a kitten the other day. Do you think that Bryce and Addison's breakup had affected your own breakup? Oh, it directly affected us. It wasn't either of their goals to directly affect us, but it's just like the way it happened. I thought you were moving in with Addison. What happened? Just nosy LOL. I don't really know where everyone got that from, but I have always been moving in with Sydney. Like Sydney and I planned to move in together since like April or May. I was always moving in with her. How the fuck did you end up meeting Cody, Co, and Kelsey after the Harry show? My favorite crossover. You'll get that story time in the Harry vlog. Do you want to stick with YouTube or do you want to go down a different path? I want to try and find my niche on TikTok more. So make sure you follow me there because I've realized through my Instagram stories lately that I like to be able to do content fast and like whenever the fuck I want. But I also love the format of YouTube still. So like, I don't know. Where do you feel most at home? On a Delta flight. Did Taylor move to LA? No, I wish. She still lives in Boston, which is also a huge reason why I kept going back this entire summer. I just needed Taylor. I think I've shared as much as I feel comfortable sharing as of right now. And I think I did everything the best way I could. And yeah, that's kind of that. That's where I'm at right now. This is just a very strange new chapter and I am not 19 anymore. I'm not doing the same shit that Boston hotel 19 year old me would do. And people change and you have to adapt to situations and heartbreak from relationships and friendships suck and can really throw your entire year off. And that is what I have learned from this year since that's what threw my entire year off. But I just hope from here on out, things just continue to get better, especially when it comes to my relationship with YouTube and social media again. And I just hope that this is a fresh start and hope people can cut me some slack. And I'm very much moved on now from a lot of these situations and I feel fucking good. I really don't have hard feelings towards anyone I talked about in this video. I don't. Yes, there are things that just make me upset and angry still that certain people have done. But at the end of the day, like I'm over it. I knew what I had to do for myself. I did it and now I'm fucking happy. And that's all that matters to me right now. This entire year, I feel like I've really just started to care what people think about me online. And I completely just cut myself off from letting myself be vulnerable online. And I just want to get back to being vulnerable. Like I definitely feel like I've built up walls, especially after the podcast, but I want to try and knock those walls down again because I just miss being there for you guys. And I miss you guys being there for me. And I miss letting you guys in on what I'm doing. And I want to just show you what I'm doing more and also introduce you to all the new people that I hang out with now that make me very happy. So that's my game plan from here on out. And I'm going to end this video now because this is definitely very long, but I love you guys so much and thank you for everything. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will just talk to you soon. I feel good about this video and I'm excited for this to go up. So uh, yeah, I'll see you fucking soon. Peace out. Bitch, I'm geeked out. Huh? Boy, you tweaking if you thinking I won't speak out. Huh? At the 